Greetings, medical wildcats. Today's topic is Otto Schnering, uh, who I call the candy man of Streeterville. He uh, was the developer and uh, owner of the company that uh, made Butterfingers and Baby Ruths. And one of the reasons I chose this topic this month is because July 21st is National Junk Food Day. For many years, uh, for over 50 years, Butterfingers and Baby Ruth bars were actually made in Streeterville, uh, just south of uh, Northwestern Medical School, uh, almost in our backyard. And in this old picture taken uh, looking north, you can see the uh, Outer Drive Bridge over the Chicago River, the, the Z-shaped curve in the bridge. And just beyond that, you can see the Curtis Candy Company at the Red Arrow uh, with the Baby Ruth and Butterfinger signs. Off in the distance on the, toward the left, you can see the old uh, Palm Olive Tower or, Play, or Playboy building. And in front of that, the Galter Carriage House. And on the right, you can see the uh, uh, Lakeshore Center, which was the American Furniture Mart. And between the two, you can see the old VA hospital and just barely make out uh, the ward building. A group of us uh, would get together after uh, classes uh, in medical school and uh, sometimes go for a run uh, south on Lakeshore Drive uh, toward the Shedd Aquarium. And when you got to a certain point on the Outer Drive Bridge and the wind was blowing just right, you could smell the chocolate and the peanuts uh, from the candy factory. The Curtis Candy Company manufactured Butterfingers and Baby Ruth bars. Uh, it was owned and operated by Otto Young Schnering. The factory was located on the Ogden Slip, a small inlet off the Chicago River on the north side, named after Chicago's first mayor. For many years, Chicago was the major center for candy makers uh, in the early 20th century. And the immigrants, especially the Germans, brought their candy making skills with them. Another reason the Chicago was a center for candy making was it was a railway hub with access to the raw ingredients, the sugar, uh, corn syrup, and uh, milk. The immigrants brought their confectionery skills with them. Uh, and uh, immigrants made uh, Tootsie Rolls, Brock's products, Cracker Jack, Red Hots, Jawbreakers, and Lemon Heads. Tootsie Rolls were developed in the New Jersey, New York area, but they were manufactured in Chicago on, the, uh, on South Cicero Avenue, just south of Midway Airport. So if you've, flew, if you've ever flown into Midway from the south, you went right over the Tootsie Roll factory. By the mid 20th century, one third of the candy in the United States was made in the Chicago area. The Germans were especially noted for being candy makers and they continued this role in the United States. Uh, candy making skills and equipment were showcased in the German pavilion at the 1893 World's Fair. And 36 year old Milton Hershey from Pennsylvania with no candy making experience was inspired to buy some of this equipment for his Pennsylvania factory. He was working on developing caramels from milk uh, but decided to give up on this and instead concentrate on making milk chocolate bars and the rest is history. In the early 1900s, Americans ate very little chocolate candy. Children were the main consumers of candy and they favored penny candy over the bars. Uh, there was a problem with keeping candy fresh and uh, until uh, refrigerated railroad cars were uh, started, uh, candy uh, was mainly a local product and uh, 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 not shipped, and it was uh, difficult to uh, uh, sell it, to manufacture and sell it in, in uh, warm weather. So it was a, mostly a local product. Chocolate candy became popular after World War I uh, when it was given to the troops in their rations packages. And with prohibition in 1920, uh, some bars turned to serving ice cream and sweets instead of liquor. Otto Schnering uh, was born and died in Chicago. His father was a German immigrant who came over uh, to the United States when, when uh, his father was only two. So he spent most of his life in uh, the Chicago area. He was a jeweler in the Chicago area. His partner was named Otto Young and uh, uh, his son Otto Y. Schnering was named after him, Otto Young Schnering. His mother was a, came from a well-to-do New England family. Uh, her name was Helen Curtis. Uh, this is not a, uh, a rags to riches story. Uh, Otto grew up in uh, what has probably been a very comfortable uh, childhood. 
he had a degree in philosophy from the University of Chicago. After, uh, uh, after he graduated, he became the retail manager for the Bent Piano Company, where he learned 20th century salesmanship. He married Dorothy Bent, the boss's daughter. Sears Roebuck bought out the Bent Piano Company and the engineer found himself without a job. So he founded the United Sales Company to pr promote food products and extracts. And he quickly learned that marketing food was a lot easier and more flexible than selling oversized musical instruments. Uh, he was known for his advertising skills. He devised an ad campaign for a Chicago baking company that sold a cheap macaroon-like product called Amarones. He uh, promoted the product as being something new and exciting without losing any of its uh, flavor or quality. He discovered that children in ads uh, uh, were uh, uh, liked by the public, uh, so he, he continued to uh, put children in his uh, advertisements. And he wanted to make snack time seem like a healthy decision, something that he continued throughout his career. The story goes that he bought some used candy making equipment for $100 to help a friend out of financial jam. And he founded the Curtis Candy Company in 1960, 1916. He named it after his mother, Helen Curtis. Uh, and it was thought he did this because of the anti-German feelings uh, around uh, the First World War and didn't want to name his company Schneering after his name. He realized uh, soon that uh, promoting his own products was more effective than promoting another uh, person's products. He started with a single five gallon kettle in the back of a hardware store at 3256 North Clark Street and then moved to uh, North Halstead with four employees. Uh, as I said before, the Germans were noted for their candy making skills. He had German heritage, but was not actually a German immigrant. Uh, and his candies were mostly experimental and not part of the German heritage. Uh, it's been described as uh, that he figuratively threw stuff at the wall to see what would stick. He started many candies uh, uh, and uh, his company uh, uh, toward the end only made Butterfingers and uh, uh, Baby Ruth's, uh, two very successful candies. But some of his earlier candies were called Polar Bars, Vanilla Coconut, By Jiminy, Jolly Jack, Marshall Nut Dip, Honeycomb Chip, and other generic products. His first breakout hit was a bar called The Candy Cake. Uh, the demand for chocolate uh, candy increased uh, when uh, soldiers came home from uh, World War I. Uh, his candy sold well, and he soon uh, had to uh, build a new factory. This one was located in the Lakeview area at 70, 750 West Briar Place. It was a modern factory, climate controlled with 30,000 square feet and the machinery that he himself designed. In 1919, he built the Streeterville plant uh, which was demolished in 1970, uh, just north of the Chicago River. Uh, Schneering wanted to undercut the 10 cent O. Henry candy bar, which was the best selling candy bar in Chicago at the time. To do this, uh, he uh, bought his products in bulk and he used machinery instead of human hands, uh, knowing that this was more efficient. And he became his own distributor. So he uh, used the corporate vertical marketing system where everything was done in house. Uh, from the development, manufacturing, uh, purchasing, sales, and advertising. The candy cake was relaunched in a log-shaped bar with a new red and white wrapper in 1929, 1921, and it was renamed the Baby Ruth. His uh, motto was, all you want for a nickel. And he said that this was named after uh, President Grover Cleveland's daughter. But was it really? Ruth Cleveland was born before Schneering uh, in 1891, and she died in 1904 at the age of 12 with diphtheria. In the early 20th century, the Cleveland children were uh, uh, in the uh, media uh, like the uh, uh, Kennedy children were in the 1960s in the United States. Uh, Babe Ruth at the time was a national sports hero, but Schneering insisted that the candy was not named uh, for the baseball star. Uh, it is thought that uh, uh, Curtis Candy Company negotiated unsuccessfully with Babe Ruth uh, to use his name on the candy bar, uh, and, but he wanted too much uh, uh, to use his name. After the Babe Ruth candy bar came out, uh, the Baby Ruth came out, 
uh, the baseball player sued Curtis uh, and lost. And then Babe Ruth developed his own candy bar as shown here on the right. Schnaring uh, filed a copyright infringement suit against uh, Babe Ruth and he won. Uh, but Babe Ruth continues his endorsing products and put his name on cereal and cigarettes. By 1928, the Baby Ruth was the top selling candy bar in the United States. Schneering was using 150,000 pounds of peanuts every day in his factories, and he was considered a marketing genius. He advertised in magazines, on billboards, at circuses, uh, county and state fairs, horse races, and even dropped uh, candy bars out of airplanes. A young man named uh, Paul Tibbetts Jr. Uh, flew in one of his candy dropping airplanes. Uh, there's a, a report that this was uh, Tibbetts' first uh, trip in an airplane, but uh, uh, Tibbetts was fascinated by aviation. And uh, years later, he was the pilot in the Enola Gay, the plane that dropped the bomb on Hiroshima. The Butterfingers bar was introduced in 1923. Schneering held a contest for, uh, to, uh, uh, to uh, come up with a name for the new product. And the winner was a self-described athletic klutz. Butterfingers' uh, success kept uh, the Curtis Candy Company going during the Depression. Schneering marketed candy as a, uh, as a healthy habit. And why not? Cigarettes were being marketed to kids. Lucky Strike uh, advertised it. Reach for a Lucky instead of a Sweet. Uh, his ads focused on the high percentage of dextrose, uh, describing it as the, the sugar your body needs, the, the sugar your body uses directly for energy in his products. And in the upper picture, you can see that uh, he says that you can run around the bases 27 times for the food energy, in other words, the calories in a Baby Ruth bar. Candy was uh, uh, probably the uh, uh, least advertised uh, uh, food product at the time. So the candy industry banded together and came up with a slogan uh, and uh, Schnering was one of their leaders and candy then became marketed as a delicious food, eat some every day. Schnering encouraged his workers to uh, snack on their own creations. But did he really believe that candy was healthy? He uh, has been described as a very caring and ethical employ employer. Uh, his team uh, he referred to as a uh, family. Uh, he tried to uh, uh, treat them very well uh, in order to avoid unionization of the workers. He opposed the 30 hour work week during the Great Depression when the government wanted employers to uh, uh, use the 30 hour work week so more people could be employed. He stressed how his continued uh, growth of his product uh, kept his uh, employees happy and uh, uh, with plenty of uh, uh, time uh, for work. Uh, he provided pension plans, profit sharing, insurance and paid vacations and holidays for his employees, which was unusual at the time. He paid higher salaries than other companies in the confection business. His factories were noted for their fresh air, cleanliness uh, and air purification systems. When World War II broke out, Congress was uh, uh, ready to uh, say that candy was not an essential industry, uh, but uh, the candy industry again banded together and convinced Congress that the candy making was an essential industry. Candy bars became part of the soldiers rations. Schnering also gave candy to the troops overseas. And he gave candy bars to children who donated scrap paper to the war effort. He donated six Holstein bulls to India to perform stud service to increase milk production in that country. And with the World War II labor shortage, uh, he hired Japanese Americans who had been placed in internment camps uh, to live in dormitories uh, uh, at his farm. Uh, when he was criticized for this, he replied that uh, these Japanese Americans were American citizens and they were skilled farmers. So let's give them a job instead of uh, confining them to an internment camp. Uh, all his life, he realized that uh, uh, the uh, discrimination toward uh, uh, foreigners, especially Japanese and uh, uh, Germans during the World Wars. He also hired German POWs at his farm uh, to, and they were guarded by US, sol US uh, soldiers. He unsuccessfully tried to hire Mexican-Americans, but he did hire uh, 3,300 uh, uh, employees by 1942. 
1944, the Schnerings moved from their home in Evanston to the John Hertz estate in Cary, Illinois. John Hertz was the founder of the car rental company. He had an elaborate farm in uh, Cary, and this is a picture of his uh, barns done in the Tudor style. Um, they were not only uh, working barns, but they also served as venues for social events. Uh, uh, Schnering purchased the land to raise cattle and uh, his farms had dormitories uh, for 300 uh, employees, cafeterias, factories, and barns. And the Schnering family lived uh, at the farm with their employees. Uh, he raised other livestock too, including hogs, cattle, turkeys, chicken, ducks, sheep, and horses. And he raised chickens and trout to sell to the Chicago area restaurants. He bought some other farms in uh, Illinois also, uh, where he uh, 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 had his uh, cattle to, uh, uh, for his own uh, milk and uh, uh, butter. He held picnics and parties for his employees and uh, gave uh, horseback riding lessons uh, to uh, the children of his employees. Uh, the employees could also receive chickens, eggs, milk, and vegetables in addition to their generous salaries. He developed the Curtis Breeding Service as the first large artificial insemination breeding program in the United States. And as an aside, he was in competition with John Rock Prentice, uh, who uh, the, the uh, Prentice Women's Hospitals are named after. Uh, John Rock Prentice was the father of, of Abra uh, Prentice Wilkin, who uh, made generous donations uh, for the women's hospitals. Uh, Schnering's wife, Dorothy, uh, took over the uh, uh, breeding service after uh, uh, Otto died in 1953. Uh, Otto divorced his first wife, uh, uh, Dorothy Bent, the uh, piano company uh, uh, owner's uh, daughter, and married another Dorothy. Uh, so his second wife was also named Dorothy. Uh, she ran the breeding service and then sold it to G.D. Searle, the pharmaceutical company, uh, after she, uh, later in life. The Curtis Candy Company is now owned by an Italian conglomerate, uh, Ferrero. Uh, it was sold to Nestle, uh, the uh, European company, and, and now is owned by Ferrero, uh, who, make, who own many uh, candy companies, including the Brock Company now. Uh, the candy company still stands in Northern Illinois at Franklin Park on Interstate 294. The cattle breeding service uh, operation, which was in Cary, is now a senior center uh, police station and village hall for, uh, for the uh, town of Cary. The Streeterville factory was demolished in 1970, and you can see the remains in this picture uh, of the uh, site looking west. And in the background, you can see the Tribune Tower. This is the remains of the uh, of the uh, uh, Curtis Candy Company. It's now the site of high-rise residences and hotels. Schnery was known to be a shrewd marketer. He invented the five cent candy bar and sold it uh, for a profit undercutting the 10 cent candy bars. Uh, his success, uh, he had wild success with the Baby Ruth and later uh, with the Butterfingers, uh, which is now outselling the Baby Ruth. He developed the first truly self-sufficient farm to factory operation and he was a caring employer uh, with integrity. Uh, he and Dorothy uh, were also philanthropic. Uh, they uh, donated and supported the Northwestern University Settlement, a project uh, to uh, uh, get housing for uh, deserving families in the Chicago area, which was started by Emma Rogers, uh, the wife of uh, the university president, Henry Rogers, and the Henry and Emma Rogers uh, society is now the society for those who have uh, left uh, Northwestern in their estate planning. Um, he also uh, donated generously to the 4-H clubs and FFA in the Chicago area, supporting agriculture and livestock breeding. Uh, he also supported the Evanston Council for Boy Scouts, the Family Welfare Association of Evanston, and uh, uh, started two educational foundations, each named in honor of his uh, parents, uh, to uh, grant scholarships to uh, his employer's children. So grab a uh, candy bar in honor of National Junk Food uh, Month and National Junk Food Day, and uh, let's to get, get together again virtually next month. In the meantime, uh, stay healthy and stay connected, and uh, I look forward to uh, next month.